I have got to say, last week definitely lived up to the hype. Ohio State and Notre Dame came down to the final play of the game, and that was just a portion of the action that Week 4 provided last week. And to be honest, I think this week is going to have a tough act to follow. But the seven games this week, Utah, Oregon State, Texas A&M, Arkansas, USC, Colorado, Michigan, Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, Ole Miss, LSU, and the game of the week, Notre Dame and Duke. Those are the seven games that I will be predicting today. And without further ado, let's get into the week five predictions. And the last three weeks, I am a combined 19 and two. So I'm hoping I can keep up with a hot streak. So let's get right into it. Our first matchup on the docket this week happens to be a Friday night matchup between two top 20 teams, Utah and Oregon State. Utah is sixth in the FBS in scoring defense, only allowing an average of nine and a half points per game, while Oregon State, they are allowing an average of 17.75 points per game, which is 30th in the FBS. Scoring wise for Utah, only averaging 22.2 points per game, which is 96th in the FBS. The status of Cameron Rising for Utah has been a huge question mark all year. He hasn't played yet this season as he still recovers from an ACL injury. So I do anticipate that this will be another matchup without Cameron Rising as they will turn to Nate Johnson at quarterback once again. And Utah, they have been getting the job done every single week so far. Their defense is a big part of what's been winning them games. They are ninth in total defense, only allowing an average of just under 264 yards per game. Their third in run defense. Oregon State's run defense is in the top 10 as well. They are seventh in run defense, only allowing an average of just under 70 rushing yards per game. And Oregon State running back Damian Martinez leads the Pac-12 in rushing yards with 432. Which is a big reason why Oregon State is ninth in rushing offense so far this season. However, I do think that the pace of the game could be in Utah's favor, I do think. They're fourth in time of possession. And I think a big reason why their defense has been doing so well this season is because Utah, they... They play smart and methodically, which you wouldn't think that a Pac-12 team would be in the top five in time of possession, but Utah is fourth. Oregon State quarterback DJU, the last two weeks, you could argue that he is starting to struggle. 31 for 64, 482 passing yards, two touchdown passes, and three interceptions in the last two weeks. I do think that this is going to be a close game. Right now, I do believe Oregon State is a one and a half point favorite or a two point favorite. But despite that, I am picking Utah to pull off the quote unquote upset. I just think Utah's defense will once again rise to the occasion, led by Jonah Ellis, who leads the FBS in sacks with five and a half on the year. But I do think that somewhere down the line, Later on in Pac-12 play, I do think not having Cameron Rising under center, Utah is going to be in trouble. But I do not think it's this week. I think with Oregon State losing their first game of the year last week on the road to Washington State, I do want to see how the Beavers do respond losing their first game of the year. But I do think Utah's defense rises to the occasion in this matchup. Next on the docket, the Southwest Classic, Texas A&M and Arkansas for the Aggies. Connor Wigman left the game last week against Auburn. It turns out that it is a high ankle sprain and he is going to be sidelined for at least this game, probably against Alabama next week. But there is some optimism that he will be back for Alabama next week. But honestly, I wouldn't count on it. Last season against Arkansas, Max Johnson was under center for this game, and he will be under center on Saturday as well. 
He went 11 for 21, 151 passing yards, and a touchdown pass. A&M's defense is allowing 17.75 points per game, which is 30th in the FBS, tied with Oregon State. And they are 14th in total defense, allowing an average of 273.8 yards per game. Arkansas is currently on a two-game losing streak. Their defense has given up 72 points in the last two weeks. But Arkansas, they have shown that they are capable of scoring points. Their defense just hasn't gotten the job done for them. But I do think that things are going to turn around for Arkansas very quickly. I do think they win this game. I just feel like without Connor Wigman, it's going to hurt the Aggies more than a lot of A&M fans realize. I'm already seeing things on social media talking about how Max Johnson is capable of leading A&M these next couple weeks without Connor Wigman. But I have talked about earlier in the year and in the preseason that the A&M offense is a lot better when Connor Wigman is under center. And I feel like with Max Johnson under center, A&M got lucky to win the game against Arkansas last season. And that is going to definitely be weighing into Arkansas's minds on Saturday. And I think they pull off the upset and win outright. At the very least, I anticipate Arkansas to cover. I believe the line is six and a half right now. When these two face off, more often than not, it's a very close game. And I think Saturday is going to be no different. But I am picking the Razorbacks to pull off the upset. USC and Colorado. Colorado is coming off of a 42-6 loss against Oregon last week. And I really want to see how Colorado is going to respond in this game. I think the first 5-10 to 10 minutes is going to show what Colorado is going to put up in this matchup. Even though I have had skepticism about USC's defense coming into the season... And I was not sold on USC's defense for this season. They are getting to the quarterback really well so far this season. As they are third in team sacks with 16. Offensively, one of the best in college football. Best scoring offense in the country, 55 points per game. Third in total offense, 569.2 yards per game. And Colorado will be once again without Travis Hunter after he suffered a lacerated liver in the Colorado State game a couple weeks ago. The question for me is, can Colorado's offense keep them in this game? I think they're capable of doing that. USC's defense, it's been suspect for the longest time. Lincoln Riley defenses, they have been suspect for the longest time. But I think USC wins this game pretty handily as Colorado's defense is not good at all. They're 113 scoring defense, allowing an average of 33.25 points per game, and they're 125th in total defense. But I do think the over will probably hit in this game if I had to guess. I'm not really sure what it is, but I would personally consider betting the over on this game because both these offenses... They have at least shown throughout the season so far they're capable of scoring points. But I think the Trojans, they win this pretty handily. But we've seen other big surprises in college football in the past, but I just can't see an upset here. I just think Caleb Williams is too talented of a quarterback. USC's offense is too talented for Colorado's defense to stop. Michigan and Nebraska. For Michigan, this is their first road game of the season, and they're going into a very hostile environment in Memorial Stadium. They are third in total defense, only allowing an average of 231 yards per game. First in scoring defense, only allowing an average of 5.75 points per game. And they are fifth in fewest penalties accumulated so far this season. However, I think the equalizer for this game is going to be the running game for both sides. Nebraska is sixth in the FBS in rushing offense, averaging just under 235 rushing yards per game, and they have the best run defense in the FBS, 
only allowing an average of 46.2 yards per game. Can Nebraska's run defense, can they contain the ground attack for Michigan? Blake Corum, who has eight rushing touchdowns so far this season, and Donovan Edwards. Heinrich Harburg, the last two weeks, as the starter for Nebraska, he has done well. He has not turned the ball over. He's played very clean. 278 passing yards, four touchdowns. 272 rushing yards and two touchdowns. So six total touchdowns, and he's averaging six and a half yards per carry. Anthony Grant is also going to have to have a big impact for Nebraska in this game, not only in this game, but for the rest of the year. As last week, Gabe Irvin and Ramir Johnson, they had season-ending surgeries. And Anthony Grant, he has done better with hanging on to the football as his fumble against Minnesota. That was a big mistake for Nebraska in that game, and that is ultimately part of what did cost them in the Minnesota game. But Nebraska's defense, I think, is fairly underrated. I think Michigan wins this game, but I would not be surprised if Nebraska at least covered. So I do think Michigan wins this outright, but I think Nebraska they had the potential of making it a much closer ball game than what a lot of people are saying and compared to paper. But I am picking the Wolverines. Kansas and Texas. Kansas is 4-0 to start the season, and they are ranked 24th in the rankings, and they go on the road to take on Texas. Now, there was a comment that I received in the comment section, and it really stuck out to me. I do not recall who made the comment, but it stuck out to me. It was talked about how Texas is their own worst enemy. And that sticks out to me because in years past, that has been the case. There always seems to be at least one game a season that Texas loses that we don't see coming. Could it be this week? Of course it could be. It could be any week. It's college football for a reason. And Kansas has the intangibles to pull off this upset as they are first in third down conversion percentage, converting on third down 60% of the time. They are 11th in time of possession, and they are 12th in rushing offense. So if Kansas can play to their strengths, then I think they have a strong chance pulling off this upset. As this could be a little bit of a look-ahead game for Texas, as they have Oklahoma in the Red River Showdown next week. But I do think this week against Kansas, and then next week in the Red River Showdown against Oklahoma, I do think that those are, this may be a controversial take here, but I think those are the two toughest games left for Texas until the end of the regular season and maybe even the big 12 championship game, depending on who they go up against. But as mentioned before, Texas, they always lose a game. It seems like that we don't see coming. I'm not saying it's going to be this game, but I could definitely see it. But I do think this season is going to be different for Texas I do think they're in for a very special season. They have momentum after the big road win against Alabama a couple weeks ago. And I think Texas wins this game. Although we have seen Kansas beat Texas before and pull off upsets. I do not think this time. I think that this season for Texas, it's going to be different. They've got the talent to make a deep run in the postseason. I'm going with the Longhorns. Ole Miss and LSU, and this one feels like an easy one for me. I recently had a conversation with someone outside the channel, and what was talked about in that conversation was that it appears that Ole Miss seems to be overrated every single season, as they get a lot of hype going into the season about how they can finally beat Alabama, be a competitor in the SEC West, but they just never live up to the billing. And I feel like that is no different this season. With Alabama not having a strong start to the year, I talked last week about how this would be a game where 
we would see how good Alabama really is. And I think Ole Miss should be fortunate that the game played out the way that it did because Ole Miss could have easily gotten boat raced in this game. Alabama is the only reason why Alabama did not boat race Ole Miss last week. And a lot of times when you play against a team like Alabama, it often becomes a season breaker. And I think it could be no different for the Rebels this season as they go on the road to Death Valley to take on LSU. And LSU is coming off of a very close victory, a game where they had to fight from start to finish to get the three-point victory. But I still think there are some misconceptions about LSU so far this season with them going up against Florida State. Florida State is a juggernaut this season so far, despite them having close calls in the last couple weeks on the road. But college football is about survive and advance. LSU did it last week against Arkansas. Florida State's not the last two weeks, a team that beat LSU very convincingly. And I talked about weeks ago how LSU, they could have been up more at the half against Florida State. And then Florida State just came out in the second half and absolutely dominated the second half of the game. I think LSU wins this game. I really don't know about the point margin right now. All I, I just think LSU is a little bit of a better team than Ole Miss is. And I think with the home crowd being in their favor, I think LSU gets it done. Wrapping up the Week 5 predictions with the game of the week, Notre Dame and Duke. For the first time ever, college game day is headed to Durham. And how does Notre Dame respond after the heartbreaking loss last week to Ohio State, losing 17-14 to on the final play of the game, a game where Notre Dame, they had the opportunities to win that game, but they squandered them. And they go on the road to Duke in a game where I really have felt for the longest time could be a potential trap game with the experience Duke has brought back from the previous season. And Mike Elko has done a very good job at turning around Duke football, building them into a football school. And Riley Leonard is one of the more underrated quarterbacks in college football. Duke is third in pass defense. Notre Dame, they are sixth in pass defense. So can the quarterbacks, can they find the open spaces the receivers provide for them? Because there's going to be opportunities. Notre Dame, I feel like, has the edge running the football with Audric Estime. They ran the ball better in the second half against Ohio State last week. But I do think this game, I think it's going to be pretty similar to how Notre Dame and Ohio State went last week. I do think both defenses will hold their own for most of the game. But in the end, I'm going to go with Notre Dame. I just think Sam Hartman, being the more experienced quarterback in this matchup, I do think it does wonders for Notre Dame. And I was back and forth on it. One minute I thought Duke was going to win and pull off this upset. And the next minute, I think Notre Dame wins. And I've been back and forth on it for the last hour and a half. But I am settling on the Irish to bounce back. I think they're going to play the chip on their shoulder in this game. Because they know they were the, they were the better team last week. But they squandered the opportunities. And I think they bounce back and redeem themselves. And that will do it for my Week 5 College Football Predictions. Comment your predictions down below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. If there is a game that I did not cover today you would like my thoughts on, please leave in the comment section down below and I will respond. Also, a brand new Top 25. I will put that in the comment section and I will pin it. Enjoy the college football this week. I know Week 5 is going to be a tough act to follow from what we saw in Week 4. But I think we're in for a very good weekend again in college football.